I did have fun imagining the Terminator movie poster with C-3PO instead of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> was Anthony Daniels walking through, through uh, whatever city it was supposed to be, looking for, I'm sorry, are you Sarah Connor? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. <laughs> Go to the next house. <laughs> Hello there. You found the Lost Holocron, an ancient artifact of lore and legends from a galaxy far, far away. Each transmission of the Lost Holocron you will join an episodic discussion of media from the Star Wars universe. We will be your guides, Tim. Merry Christmas. I'm Kyle, and I'm obligated to say hi to you this time. <laughs> Scott. See, it worked. We got you to say hi. <laughs> and Stuart. I'm still here. Hold on. Uh, we'll be following the material up to you, including Chapter 14 of Heir to the Empire. Scott, what happened this time? All right. Story so far... Grand Admiral Thrawn is leading the Imperial Remnants from the Shadows in a grand plan to destroy the New Republic and reestablish the Galactic Empire. He commands a raid on the Athega system, just as Luke Skywalker, Leia Organa Solo, Han Solo, and Chewbacca arrive looking to garner help from Lando Calrissian. During the skirmish, the Imperials make away with the mining equipment, and the Dark Jedi clone commanding Thrawn's fleet, Jeruus Sabaoth, takes the opportunity to make contact with Luke. Thrawn is none too pleased to learn of this contact and plots with Captain Peleon to disillusion Sabaoth of his self-importance and impetuousness. Stuart, so what's going on? So in this chapter, Lando is distraught after the loss of half his workforce, 51 Molemilin is stolen during the raid of the last chapter. Han and Leia ask for his help and devise a plan to send Leia to Kashyyyk with Chewbacca, while Han and Lando broadcast a decoy signal, giving the illusion that Leia is still on the run. In order to achieve this, and in a violation of his programming, C-3PO has his voice altered to perfectly imitate Leia's. Ooh. Uh, <laughs> Luke shares <laughs> his findings from Dagobah, what Lando identifies as a beck and call, a device that summons a slave circuit rigged ship at a moment's notice. He later confides in Leia his true reason for searching that specific location and tells her about the contact he had during the space battle earlier. She divulges the rumor of Master Sabaoth on Jormak, and while they suspect a trap, Luke is eager for what the opportunity could mean. Okay, guys, there are two monumentous things in this chapter. All right, mm -hmm. tell us. Mm -hmm. The first, Lando. <laughs> In the flesh. Yes. <laughs> the second, and this one is very, very, very important. Chewbacca uh -huh. actually contributes something to a conversation. <laughs> Long he has like two or three lines in this chapter. I know, and, right? And of course, it's all just him going, Argh! but you know, it, I think it, he does it like two or three times. Let's keep it up. <laughs> We love seeing an active party member. <laughs> Especially somebody who is so active in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> it seems like uh, Chewie will have a lot more to do since it's just going to be him and Leia in the, in the mm -hmm. next, season, next, next season, the next ch few chapters. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Which yeah, is going to be a like... really fun pairing, I think. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I think so too. Yeah. Yeah, because they never really got along like in the movies very well. And this time they're going to kind of have to. That'll be interesting to see how uh, how Timothy Zahn deals with that character pairing. Yeah. You know, something did occur to me when I was reading this chapter. Um, the 51 mole miners that were taken, were they man? Did he, like, abduct the people <laughs> inside them as well? Or did they, were a bunch of people wiped out and then the mole miners were taken? Oh, that's uh -huh. a good question. I can't imagine they were just 51 unmanned mole miners that they all swooped up. Yeah. Oh my god, I thought the mole miners were people, not machines. <laughs> I, was, I was like, we have creatures the size of TIE fighters, okay. <laughs> I mean, I mean in Star Wars, I can, accepted it, yeah. Like like creatures that the little Ugnaughts can like swim inside of or something? Like. <laughs> I miss that detail. They end up doing the, like, the Ratatouille type thing of like, pulling the hair <laughs> on top of the mole. Yeah, the hair, right. Why do all these mole miners have chef hats on? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> they smell like a sewer. <laughs> I don't know why, but when I think of mole miners, I think of like giant ticks. I think of the underminer from the end of Incredibles. <laughs> right. That's what I was. That's, what that's I also a good think one. About. Yeah. <laughs>
I think I was one of the very few people who played the video game of that. <laughs> oh no, I, I was one of those. Oh. I'm one of them. Yeah, I played it. <laughs> I, I I couldn't beat it because I kept getting soft knocked out <laughs> of the level. Oh, oh I beat it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> was there an actual um, video game for the mole miner thing, or are you just talking mm-hmm. about the? Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah, it I was like the Incredibles video. Well, the game. Underminer, it was a, right? a adaptation. Yeah, yeah. But, it, um, it was a, it was a sequel for the Incredibles video game. It was a it was meant to be a co op thing where you played as Mr. Incredible right. and Foe Zone. Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. Yeah, I played the Game Boy version. Oh, mm-hmm. oh, I I played the PS2 version, so I imagine we had two very different experiences. <laughs> we probably did. Yeah, I guess the Game Boy version is more stable. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and no scott i played it on the game boy advance okay sp the best one yeah i think the og game boy might be a little older than you guys well i did actually play one of those too did you yeah yeah my parents had one i remember the og game boy i remember playing like the kirby game kirby's dreamland <laughs> yep yeah, yeah that's so awesome. <laughs> i actually did play that for nes too though oh that heck yeah game. i miss that game yeah i like the golf one <laughs> i can't remember what it's called but there was a kirby the golf game, game. <laughs> is there really oh it's great <laughs> there was a lot of different kirby random like random games yeah but we've yet to have a kirby star wars crossover one day <laughs> <laughs> it's up to us guys. what if kirby what if kirby sucks up in a salamiri and a joe oh. <laughs> <laughs> really like <laughs> but can't he just do one at a time yeah you can only do one at a time yeah. you have to choose oh, which power you want right right yeah yeah I, I feel like if kirby did uh suck about yes on Mary, then he'd just be unstoppable he couldn't like they can't they jedi can't do True. anything against yeah him. exactly mm-hmm. yeah that's is the it? only thing holding back the yes on Mary is that they act they're they are just lizards and they can't fight <laughs> 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 Isn't part of the Kirby law like they need to keep him happy or something because he contains like an entire universe inside himself and they're worried that he will swallow this universe as well? Or at least the, the Kirby Superstar universe. Yeah, I love that Kirby. Cool. Like, it, he, whenever he, what, like, most of the enemies he fights in his games are cute, but the final boss is like. Ah, yes, cosmic horrors have come for Kirby once again. <laughs> Kirby is a cosmic horror. <laughs> uh, right. He's just pink and cute. Doesn't mean he's not a cosmic horror from beyond. That's how they get you. Yeah. 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 That's why they. That's why he is fighting other cosmic horrors is because they see him as a threat. They're trying to take him out before they come before he gets them next. Yeah. How yeah. horrifying do you think it must be to be sucked inside Kirby? Oh, I can't imagine yeah. what it's like inside oh, there. It must look awful. <laughs> it's like, it, it would be an entire pocket dimension that you go into. So mm-hmm. oh, just imagine taking a dive into a bag of holding. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. That just happens that to be like, scary. you know, Absathos little brother or something. <laughs> Do you just like spend the rest of your existence there then? Until somebody chooses to pull you out. Well, it depends because like in... in in his games, if you if you swallow someone, they die. That's killing them. How do you game. know? Because if they're fair. going into a pocket universe. Mm-hmm. I only can assume because he absor- absorbs their essence. So what is left of them? Uh, yeah. Oh, they're mm. a husk floating through. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> so Kirby is filled with the undead remnants of <laughs> his fallen enemies. <laughs> <laughs> You just imagine that there's a like Kirby the Necromancer kind of game where he's just <laughs> spitting out all these corpses and he's the lich at the center of this undead army. Yeah, seriously. Oh man. Or he's just like a taxidermist and he just like you know His old factory <laughs> is gonna be within him. He swallowed it long long ago. Yeah. Oh. And so back to Star Wars. Right. Yeah, chapter we got a lot to talk about in this chapter. Yeah. <laughs> More content for the yeah. Patreon subscribers. Well, I, first off, I, I think it's weird that they're like, <laughs> the Wookiee plan is dangerous even for the Wookiees. I, I, I mean, it been, is. Well, yeah, it, it wouldn't is. it kind of be, because it's always said that the Wookiee species are being 
heavily used for slavery. Mm. I can't imagine there's many left. I imagine that their planet's mostly overrun, like nature taking it back. Oh, maybe. Mm. Like how, how many? Like what? Like I wonder what percentage of the Wookies were left on their planet to just left alone. Mm. That's a I very know. good I mean, question. I got, I got the impression it was still pretty much the Wookiee planet, but yeah, um, I mean, it, at a uh, at the risk of sounding insensitive, um, plenty of slavery has happened in human history that um, people were sold to and from certain places, you know, heavily Africa. Mm -hmm. But there mm -hmm. are still many more people in Africa today, uh, yeah. despite you know, giant working colonies being yeah. exhumed from from the continent. That's true. We do have reproduction. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So it's probably pretty populated. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, particularly if they're picking the low hanging fruit of like Wookiees mm. that are on beach lands and kind of like lowland areas. Whereas, um, you know, if you're in the dense forest, uh, that's probably a lot harder to go in and start. What do we call it? We call it human, human trafficking, Wookiee trafficking. Mm. Oh. Yeah, or like <laughs> that was a sad like, thought. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> Craigslist Kashyyyk, you know, it's like you go to buy a toaster and like you know get swiped. No. <laughs> <laughs> and you know they didn't just take the men; they took the women and the children too. Oh, right. always. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I was, I was thinking. <laughs> Thinking that um, you know, of course, the ecology is dangerous. You go anywhere that's like untamed on Earth, that's pretty dangerous for humans too. Mm -hmm. So I don't think that Wookies would be particularly adept at surviving outside of their own because they are social creatures, right? Every all oh, most most uh, species in Star Wars are social creatures, so mm -hmm. nobody's mm -hmm. living independently. Yeah, you know, those, uh, well, and you're. <laughs> The so you're people. from Australia, so you're no stranger to animals trying to kill you. So, Oof, uh -huh. <laughs> dangerous. Oh, I, I felt a lot of stories in that sigh. <laughs> uh -huh. I have a particular dislike for ants. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> can, you, can you tell us about drop bears? Drop is bears. Bull ant, or is it different? <laughs> the bulldog ant, or bull ant, or something. Drop bears are. Uh... Oh yeah, drop bear. You got to cover yourself <laughs> in Vegemite, and they won't touch you. No, you gotta you gotta rub Vegemite behind your ears. <laughs> yeah, that's only for the tourists. The uh, the native yeah. people are, have a particular smell that's uh, mm. that makes us immune to drop bears. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna have so much fun looking these up later. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of kind of strange that um, they would point out the Wookies and be like, you know, if you're a Wookie, it's like ride or die kind of kind of culture with the wookies like nobody's a turncoat mm. nobody is like kind of questionable everybody is faithful towards the wookies and sounds like know. a hotbed for codependency <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean they do have their like life debts and stuff like that so oh yeah, yeah. maybe they do maybe they're like the predator species and they're just very honorable <laughs> maybe yeah yeah if you take any historical allegories for honor-driven societies those are pretty barbaric and and, and brutal mm. imagine there's just a hive yeah. of kratos's and other spartans in the uh in the wookie world oof yeah <laughs> god of war but it's just chewbacca <laughs> yes <laughs> yes please yeah. i love the theory that han is actually chewy's dog <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it does make sense that you would life debt yourself to somebody who, whose life is much significantly shorter than yours. Yeah. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, I'll protect you for the rest of your life. Yeah, Chewie just wants to life debt around. No. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we had the discussion about Yoda uh, as well, being like right. 900 yeah. years old and not really caring for people that <laughs> only have the lifespan of like 80 years. Yeah. Right. <laughs> It's like, oh, he's dead? Okay, yeah, he was fun. Yeah. <laughs> How long do Wookiees live? It's like 400 or 600 years or something? Oh, we have to consult. To the Wookiee Yes. 
And then we have to go to the Legends section. Oh, do you think it's different? I'm about to find out. (laughs) Why would they retcon the lifetime of a wiki? I don't know. (laughs) All right, so we'll start with canon. Mm -hmm. Average lifespan over 400 standard years. Oh, okay. Not as long as I was thinking. Yeah, now now let's look at um, Legends. Still more than 400 standard years, so it's the same. Oh, okay, cool. Mm. Has nobody actually measured? Because over 400 could be a very big number. <laughs> over 400 could be 4,000. <laughs> there are like many numbers be... that exist beyond 400. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah, I, I guess it's pretty hard to measure a Wookiee's lifespan. Yeah. I don't know if you can keep them in one place. Right, especially if they outlive everybody who's keeping track. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we should get Yoda on this. That's his true purpose. <laughs> yeah. I, I wonder do I wonder what uh what wiki art is like. Oh, I imagine it's very beautiful. I, I imagine it's pretty hairy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what if they do that thing where they get like they get wads of their hair and then they needle point it? Like that. Oh yeah, that's fine. what I was thinking. They're just <laughs> there with these fluffy little bunnies or <laughs> <laughs> Tim, Tim got a real kick out of that. That's one. disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> it's disgusting. Yeah. Ugh. Can you imagine yeah. everything they eat or cook it just has to be like full of hair? Do they shed? Are are Wookiees hypoallergenic? <laughs> <laughs> These are the real questions. Like still shed, don't they? Someone get George Lucas on the phone right now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> or the Lucasfilm story. Humans are hypo, and we still shed a lot of hair. It's true. That is true, yeah. <laughs> yep, I'm shedding more and more hair. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Yeah, you can yeah. wear the hat now. <laughs> yeah. That was a good hat indeed. It does suit you quite well. well yeah. Thank you. Well, hopefully we'll get Shit. to learn more about the Wookiee species in future chapters as we follow yeah. Leia and Chewbacca. Yeah, I, I hope they don't just gloss over it. I, I do. I, I, yeah. I do want like a little bit of a slice of life <laughs> Chuba Wookie story. Me too. Slice I want to spend some time on Kashuk. <laughs> I want a chapter where it's just grunts and growls between Wookies. <laughs> <laughs> if I remember correctly, a lot of it is translated, so we'll, we'll get yeah. get some disappointing. Of that. Oh, that's <laughs> going to be really interesting to see him right around with just yeah. Leia there. Because mm. we won't have Han to translate. Yeah. So that means there probably is a good chance we're not going to see anything on Kashyyyk then. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I do like in this chapter how Lando uses the word uh, respectable to say that mm-hmm. he's running operations because um, that was one of the words that kept coming up back when uh, Dravis was accusing Han of moving mm-hmm. over to the. Um, Moving over to his uh, the New Republic side. You've gone all yeah. respectable. You've mm-hmm. gone respectable. So that was a nice little tie-in. And then Dravis is also mentioned in this chapter, and we get the first mention of Talon Card. Right. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm not, not the first mention of this. Yeah, a lot of name drops in yeah. this one. Now they can actually have a potential story purpose. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, they did pretty well in their introduction of, like, bargaining with Peleon, and Peleon they was did. getting pretty stiff-lipped about... Um, in prying into their business. And the, but, yeah. Uh, yeah, they've been a little bit nothing burger since then. I'm excited to see more happen. Yeah. Um, I I thought it was interesting that Han, they made a point of like Han not minding Lando being like courtly toward Leia this time. Mm-hmm. So I'm wondering, yeah, why he doesn't care. <laughs> they kind of mentioned he didn't really notice it. Yeah, I think that was, like um, he was distracted this yeah. particular time. Yeah, I think he's being distracted. Yeah, yeah. gotcha. That uh, whatever's because we mentioned when he was um, when they escaped that one with the fake falcon, right? Uh, that he was starting to get paranoid, and you know, as Kyle pointed out, it's not good. Han's not the type to feel like that often. So mm-hmm. uh, you know, something's you know got his feathers in a. In a ruffle. It's going to be really interesting to watch him throughout the rest of this story. Yeah. I do really like how his behavior has been like steadily changing. Yeah. Throughout. 
I'm interested to see the interaction between Lando and, and Han now. Mm-hmm. That's going to be... Because uh, I, I hope that Lando, Lando doesn't get just dropped after yeah, this. Yeah, too. <laughs> we always love Lando. Lando. Yeah, he's yeah. good. <laughs> he didn't feel particularly Lando in this. Like there were some certain mannerisms, like the uh, the court courtly ship courtliness, courtly behavior. <laughs> yeah, yeah, courtly behavior with um, Leia, and I liked uh, the 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 sense of his style as also the the tame storm cloud that was ruffling behind him, and then he turns around and he's like, "Oh, I'm very sorry. Where are my manners?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's like yeah. we see his true color. You know, he's like he's like cursing under his breath you know it's almost like he wanted to just mm-hmm. scream he's like they took 51 you know but he doesn't actually get that far yeah. but and then he's yeah. and then he's like oh wait i gotta put on my facade you know it's like oh yeah all right i like boss yeah. man lando though <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. he's yeah. very yeah. very suave very cool yeah very good host i would like to go to dinner with him oh mm-hmm. yeah exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah but we found out what the object is via Lando as well. Yeah. So yeah. some sort of spaceship summoning key fob. The <laughs> key fob. <laughs> yeah. Key fob, yeah. It summons your car for you. What's a key fob? It's a it's a it's a what? What's a key fob? It's like the thing that you use to unlock your car. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, a little remote, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. This is a bit more than that. <laughs> yeah, it's like more, a droid yeah. valet system. But not much more. I, I mean, even some key fobs start cars for you nowadays. <laughs> True, yeah. 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 You know, it just, it, it just summons you. It did say that it had a limited range, like a plant, like less than planetary. Yeah. Um, I would just be clicking that wherever I went. <laughs> right. <laughs> it, it reminds me of that, uh, that car. I, I don't know if you guys in. remember the car that was like... Uh, there, there was like some sort of loot box esque thing where if you were part of it for a certain month, you got sent a little thing, and depending on what color the light was, told you how close to a car that you could unlock was. Hmm. Oh. There was one car that everyone can unlock with this thing, and so you just had to find it, and whoever found it could unlock it. And if someone else who also had it could find it and unlock it. That sounds like a Mr. Beast kind of challenge. Where you have to like fight the person for the car or something. Yeah. Like if you unlocked it, do you win the car or whatever? So like a little scavenger hunt was started to find this car because anyone who was part of this service mm. and whoever got to it could get it. Oh, dang. So then everybody has to like but fight. But then after you won the car, car, what stops other people from taking it off you? N- nothing. They could also take it. The, there was a That's bit of a controversy because there was a woman who found the car, uh, got it, and then disabled the tracking on it. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. And it that was like, funny. well, it, it be, oh, which was kind of like, everyone was like, oh, that's kind of a <laughs> move. It, it was supposed to be this fun thing for all of us. No, mm-hmm. a car is on the line. Come on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> just like you're a... not meant to keep it. That's, it's not like you get the title to the car. Oh, oh, okay. Gotcha. Was it like a zip car or something? Kind of like, yeah. Oh, I okay. see. It's not meant to be your car if you find it. Oh, gotcha. Okay. It kind of sounded like that. <laughs> you just get to like rent it for oh, a okay. day or whatever. Who fills it up there? Right. Everybody's right. just like kicking their can it. down the road until. <laughs> yeah, and who's paying the insurance? Poor sap stuck with. It does sound kind of fun though, because okay? you you never know when your car is going to be there or not going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You come out of Costco with your groceries, and you're like, <laughs> <It's a> gamble. <laughs> but yeah, so basically, um, what Luke found on Dagobah, it's supposed mm-hmm. to be a little device that when you press it, a ship will come to you with it, mm-hmm. if you're in the range, and it will either come to you depending on how well it's programmed, it will just fly to you, or sometimes it will like full assault its way to you <laughs> if need be <laughs> how discriminant is that programming as well <laughs> like it'll just come crashing through everything <laughs> yeah because yeah, lando did say that it would fight its way through yeah. enemy ships mm-hmm. and <laughs> i imagine yeah. there would be quite a bit of uh, collateral it's, damage along the way it's whoever yeah. that ship perceives as a threat i guess <laughs> Which I do think is for Saturday. Mm-hmm. I think there is going to be a battle that's going down, and then someone's going to press that button, and they're going to get <laughs> happy. <laughs> they did mention, like Han makes this kind of like off, off-handed comment about some katana fleet, which mm. 
I I think because it's named that it's going to be a plot point later. It seems very MacGuffin-y to say like, oh, there's uh, a fleet a fleet of ships that are circuit slaved that droids went for a joyride with or something. Mm. Like, that seems to be what's going on. So we're we're going to use a beck and call to summon all those ships at once at some point. <laughs> It'd be fun if it was so advanced that it wasn't just a ship; it was a fleet that was going to come. Yes, how like cool at the would end that of be? Rise of Skywalker. <laughs> they just okay, so, jumping. <laughs> <laughs> so the current head cannon for this thing that Luke holds is a beck and call for an entire fleet yes. of some long lost yeah. ships. Yes. yes. Nice. Let's they go with it. Yeah. Good Every find, ship. Luke. <laughs> <laughs> like a ghost fleet i did like the explanation to it being on dagobah though where it's like yeah yoda basically took down a dark jedi <laughs> yeah yeah that yeah. seemed pretty cool it did kind of like give a little flash into the alternate history of what the clone wars might have been yeah. at this mm-hmm. point and i, I kind of got the feeling that like what if the clone wars because sabayoth is a clone right mm-hmm. what if the right. clone wars were clone jedi or clone dark jedi that were mm. assaulting the mm. the Jedi or the galaxy or whatever. And it was just like this big, messy battle, like um, like the Pokemon movie where Mewtwo is cloning all the, all, the, um, all, the, all the other Pokemon and then having them fight against each other. Mm. Mm. That's a pretty cool Clone Wars. Yeah. I'd love to see a Gendy Tartakovsky micro-series on that concept. That would be be really cool. Yeah, he would make it really scary too. (laughs) Oh yeah, I imagine something like body snatching the Jedi as they're coming onto the, and then having to fight themselves in some sort of weird, like weird mirror. Oh yeah, be awesome and terrifying. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but yeah, but it's like, uh, of course, Yoda took down a dark Jedi. Of course. (laughs) Yeah. Hmm. Do you think it was like some kind of plot that, because it, it seemed like that's just where Yoda ended up and he just stayed there. So he kind of got word of some insurrection against the Jedi. Mm. And after he killed this one and then just decided, okay, I have to stay here. I, I didn't consider alternate mm. reasons for Yoda ending up on Dagobah. I was still thinking Revenge of the Sith. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. They mentioned an interesting. They mentioned an interesting point in this chapter that the dark side energies and Yoda's light side energies kind of canceled each other out. Mm-hmm. So that was kind of like, which I thought was kind of a cool idea. Yeah. Um, why he would like? That's pretty much the point of him going to that location. Yeah, I did like that explanation as well. I would like to know when exactly this battle took place. Like, was it during? imperial rule or was it during the clone wars was it before yeah so there's a um i'm trying to find it here in wikipedia and legends but there is a mention of um yoda or another of yoda species but everybody thinks it's yoda um or or it may have been somebody called but they think that's the same character is the character really named (laughs) yeah Come on. Yeah, apparently that was supposed to be Yoda's <laughs> original name as well. Um, oh no! <laughs> yeah, but so apparently there's he goes to he follows this dark Jedi to a, against what his master tells him. The master tells him not to pursue him, and he goes he follows him to Dagobah and he ends up killing him. And it just so happens that that dark Jedi was from Bifash as well. But I I get the impression that this takes place far in the past like probably during his maybe padawan or jedi knight days ah that would make sense yeah maybe it was kind of like a little bit like it's supposed to rhyme with this uh kind of reflection when they wrote that piece yeah but my impression was that it was during the clone wars that this altercation happened but the technology is pre-Clone Wars. Mm-hmm. I imagine it happening during Yoda's exile. Hmm. Oh, okay. Yeah. You mean after Revenge of the Sith? 
<laughs> after uh, uh, yeah, after whatever episode three and this alternate uh, timeline is so how he got to dig a lot of persons, right? Yeah, yeah, like the Star Jedi is just escaping bit fast, and then he's on mm. Dagobah, and oh, surprise, Yoda's there, and now mm. you're about to get wrecked, son. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I do. I do wonder what the specific statistics was like. So, did Yoda? fight him in the cave and then the rest of his stuff just kind of faded away but the key fob stayed or <clears throat> did yoda like kill a guy take all the stuff find a key fob and say what the hell is this and chuck it into the cave <laughs> <laughs> well well if you i i think still that maybe the key fob was something that yoda had left for luke um oh, okay. probably Either in his first oh. encounter with the cave or the second encounter in the cave, I'm like I'm okay. not sure. Like, but maybe it, you know it was his original intention to send Luke into the cave as like his final Jedi test and retrieve the key fob, which he didn't do. Um, <laughs> right, he found not it in episode on this... five or six, but <laughs> no, yeah. 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 But yeah, I think Yoda killed the guy in the cave and looted the body let it go back to the earth and he's placed the the key fob and everything else is like in his hut somewhere or he destroyed it or something but the, the key fob he left mm. is like okay maybe um you know one of the skywalker twins will want to we'll use this as a final test and put that in the cave for them to retrieve just as like a i don't know maybe just a useless MacGuffin or something but like you're going into the cave you're looking for a thing come back to me when you find it hmm. so he hides it like an easter egg or something it implies there would be a ship or something on Dagobah, right? Because the Dark Jedi got there somehow. What would they need use of this key fob to get a random ship? Because it's kind of a little interesting to me that Yoda would leave something like this behind and not like another way for them to develop their force abilities. Why would he leave something that can just call a ship and not something that can like, you know, op- open their mind up to the force or whatever? Maybe he felt bad about Luke's X-Wing in the swamp. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, yeah. I, I, that's why I feel like it doesn't necessarily matter what the I, retrieval item is. It's just the, the challenge is actually facing whatever the cave throws mm. at you. But okay, yeah. you need to face that and then pull out whatever is waiting there for you. So maybe Yoda just had no idea what it is, and he's like, oh, trophy. <laughs> maybe he just throws it over his shoulder, and then, you know, <laughs> he's like... <laughs> then a rat finds it, brings it to the cave, and just, starts ice Just age. some trash, you know. <laughs> yeah, because it has to be a bit of technology, right? Because everything else gets swallowed by the swamp. Right, yeah. So right. that's the only thing that he can leave there for many, many years and expect to still yeah. tell them, oh, well, yeah, there is something in the cave waiting for you, and not just like a wooden cup that was eaten like 60 years ago or whatever. <laughs> well, now I feel like now I feel like the ship is on Dagobah because it has to be within less than a planetary range. Right. So unless another ship like yeah unless this person had a secondary ship in addition to their fleet that they can call at will unless they just have like a really bad ship that Yoda wanted them to find or something. This is like the Ferrari region. of starships. <laughs> you have to find this. It's really cool. <laughs> That all the starships like filled with all these artifacts from the Dark Jedi and or Yoda. It's just uh, it's just one of those vans that have like a uh, like wizard painted on the side of it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it. It's it's very specifically the painting of uh, Sabayoth doing the lightning <laughs> from the cover yeah. of the original book. Yeah, yeah. The abs. It's the painting of his abs makes the ship go faster. The more, the more we read this book, the more I'm disappointed that they changed the cover because, like, just right. how important Sabayoth is. Yeah, like that original cover, like it has all of the characters there. Like this mm-hmm. new cover that we've got is only Luke using his lightsaber, which he hasn't done much of, and right. a very stern-looking uh, Thrawn. It's because the the new cover is supposed to be part of the other two you're supposed to have the other two and it makes a mural a mural also minimalism is in (laughs) yeah yeah to be fair Mm. if you like looking in the uh into the cover page the only mural that it makes is between the first two and the last one is entirely separate right yeah Yeah. (laughs) that's obnoxious no you that's a good point 
So if they if they were going to do oh wait, hold on, there is one starship uh, in the top of that connection that you is see, between Stuart, both. It all parts. comes together. <laughs> <laughs> uh huh. Trust the process. <laughs> yep. Okay. Maybe it's the uh, maybe it just calls Yoda's house because wasn't his house made out of like the drop pod? That would be hilarious. I would love to see that. <laughs> <laughs> this is does all confirm what i suspected before about luke being completely silent about his time on dagobah like dagobah didn't mm. seem to be um on anybody's radar until he mentioned oh, it yeah. right now which they all connected to the the crazy bib fash um jedi mm-hmm. uh and then even leia she says like oh am i gonna learn where you're crazy uh jedi boot camp was Mm -hmm. uh so he didn't mention that until this very point in the in the timeline Mm. yeah Hmm. so what do you think they suspected that he was doing in that like six month period i imagine they i don't know maybe maybe saw it as a missions trip or whatever (laughs) just like oh (laughs) he's away for a bit (laughs) he did a thing like 1980s exercise montage oh wait i guess I guess they did know he went through some sort of boot camp, but they didn't know where. All right, yeah. So, uh huh. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense then. Probably was a detail they wouldn't consider important. <laughs> yeah. They, they were probably more like, "Oh, yay, we're fighting a war. Luke is Luke. Luke has better force abilities now. <laughs> yeah, now he can blow yay. up two Death Stars. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, he doesn't blow up the second one, but no. <laughs> no, but he has the power to change he has people's the power hearts. Too, though. He has yes. the power of love and friendship on his side. Yes, he right. does. <laughs> Care Bear Stare. He has the power of the day man. <laughs> All right, you guys, I feel really badly for 3PO now. Yeah. No one I ever know. respects his boundaries. <laughs> no. Granted, he he can be pretty uppity, but... <laughs> Well, his boundaries were installed by like a ten-year-old kid, right? <laughs> or do they like update his his software like alternate every timeline, Scott? Couple alternate weeks. timeline. <laughs> oh, right, right. <laughs> right Where is right. your canon now? <laughs> it's all over the place. I mean, it <laughs> still could be Vader's handiwork in making three PO. It could still, yeah. I mean, R two has no direct relation to Vader in this either. That's true. But yeah, no, if you're, you've got boundaries, it doesn't matter how, uh, what people, other people think about your boundaries. If they, like that's being trespassed against, you know, that's, he's a sentient being. Yeah. Droid rights. Yeah. Droid rights people, mm-hmm. <laughs> which I hinted at in our last episode of, um, our last transmission that, um, R2 has PTSD. Yes. Because oh, yeah. I think that with all the, the the trespasses against droids they keep wiping their memories so that they don't have all that kind of they don't have to deal with droid trauma and droid um Mm. they don't need droid therapists to deal with what they're making the droids do but because r2 hasn't been touched in what 38 years or something like at this point he's um yeah yeah he's just like yeah a ball of anxiety now Mm mm-hmm but if you also subscribe to the theory that he's basically the narrator for this whole, you know, everything, if his memory gets wiped, then everything's screwed. But I don't know. I kind of like that idea, but I don't. It's like, where does it end? Like, is he still narrating? I haven't heard the this books? theory. So there's there's a theory that R two is the narrator. It's a theory yeah. that R two is recounting the events to the Willis. Or yeah, um, that's what it is. At yeah. the end of the oh, saga, the Willis. Yeah, that's what it is. So then, gotcha. yeah. So is, does that mean he's recounting everything that happens in *Heir to the Empire*? Is he recounting everything that happens like later, or is it just like you know the movies that we know of, or what? I don't know, but I do like that idea. I think it's pretty cool. Was Disney buying *Star Wars*? Them altering R2's memory? Mm, I think it does. Did he foresee that? Yes. Did he know that? Did he tell that Did to he? the Wills? Did he tell <laughs> that to the Wills? Do the Wills also have legends in canon? <laughs> <laughs> I do now. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, they were in the end of um uh and a certain point of view. That's right. That was, oh my least favorite chapter in that book. Oof. They were also mentioned in Rogue One. Oh yeah. Really? Right, they were. 
I'm gonna have to rewatch that eventually. Now that Andor yeah. has made it ten times better. <laughs> I'll watch Andor sooner or later. I'll, I'll probably watch Andor after I finish Walking Dead. They, um, I think, after George Lucas's original nine nonology is when the recounting is supposed to happen. So you can wipe mm. R2's memory after that, just not before. Okay. Because I guess this is the uh, the, the the Buddhist um, if. R2 can't tell a story. Did it really happen? Hmm. Is R2 a reliable narrator? That's a good question. He, he does some pretty shifty things in the, in the <laughs> movies. Uh-huh. He does. He does oh, it for the, the sake of the story, though, to keep it exciting. <laughs> yeah, he's telling the wills. He's no like, yeah, he's man, PTSD. I that. <laughs> <laughs> R2's just stirring up drama, so he has something more interesting to tell them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh-huh. He's like, yeah. Then episode four rolled around, and suddenly I didn't have my jetpacks anymore. What if it's for a contest between multiple Astromax for who has the best story to the wills? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Maybe it's just fan fiction. Yeah. <laughs> just R two is his fiction. own self insert into the story of the universe. <laughs> no wonder he makes it through everything and is so cool. <laughs> And, like, uh, always gets out of these altercations. <laughs> but now 3PO is a Terminator. <laughs> I did have fun imagining the Terminator movie poster with C-3PO instead of Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> <laughs> and Anthony Daniels walking through, through uh, whatever city it was supposed to be, looking for, I'm sorry, are you Sarah Connor? Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. <laughs> Go on to the next house. Yeah. Oh, man. Anthony Daniels would make a scary Terminator. <laughs> oh, yeah, I could imagine, you know, uh, yeah, you, you could definitely make that happen. Yeah. He gets, uh, he gets pretty crazy in uh, Attack of the Clones and the Genosis, the pit. You know, he's like, die, he does, die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh my, what am I saying? But I do feel like this voice changing is a skill that he probably should have had before. Right. Yeah. I know. So yeah. I think of that too. But it's against his, and like the ethics of whatever program he was oh, right. actually gone with. The, that that pesky programming. Right. He, yeah. He, he, just like how he can't say uh, he can't translate Seth. morality, whatever. Right. <laughs> In Kotor two, you have to trick the HK fifty droid right. into <laughs> mimicking that guy. Right. Because he just won't give it up. Oh, that's right. They did have that ability. I mean, this is before that, of course. Right. Yeah, but yeah. But even him, he could. He he was trying to put up the guise of like I'm an ethical protocol droid, not some assassin that it is uh, doesn't have these ethical programmings that are standard across the galaxy. Mm-hmm. And then you kind of like you talk him in a circle, and then he, and then you're allow, allowed to make him violate the supposed programming that he doesn't actually have. <laughs> Just once, I would love for a droid to be able to choose their morality and ethics hmm. instead of have it given to them. Although that does beg the question, do any of us? Ah, Stuart, Stuart, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> these, these are stories about space wizards intended for children. <laughs> Don't make me think. <laughs> I, I would like to think with how my family is, I chose my ethics. <laughs> Same. Yeah. I am a hard consequentialist, so uh, and we'll have to have talk about this at another time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, Stuart, why don't you tell me your opinions on last names? On last names? Oh, God. <laughs> this is, uh... <laughs> Cause, uh, yeah, I did want to bring up how um, it was interesting that there's no mention of the word Sith in this mm. chapter. And even Vader and Palpatine were being extended under the umbrella of Dark Jedi. And I did a little digging oh, yeah. to find out what that was the case. And um, on Wikipedia, it says that George Lucas was quite um, secretive about that title and what it actually meant mm. for uh, up until the um, the prequel trilogy. Oh. Um, so he yeah. was that they were directed in this book 
uh, and in the media that was being made at the time that anybody who was a Jedi that used the dark side should be labeled as a dark Jedi. Right. So I liked, I like how that Sith is still kind of like a kind of secret organization that is something of legends and, and not of a, anyone current to the story. And they're like, Oh, well, you know, the dark Jedi of Palpatine and the dark Jedi of, um, but they were still being maybe propagandized as mm. the fallibility of Jedi. Jedi. Yeah, true. When was Sith yeah. first mentioned? Was it in Return of the Jedi? Well, I remember when I was a kid not realizing that Darth Vader and, you know, well, we didn't know he was Sidious at the time. I remember not realizing that, oh, they're Sith, because I think I had heard the word Sith right around the time that, um, like, episode one came out. Yeah. And then I didn't really put two and two together until afterwards. I was like, oh, yeah, Darth Vader, Sith, duh. He's not just a dark Jedi. But during the whole original trilogy. Yeah, yeah. so it says here, Sith is something that appeared in rough drafts of Star Wars, and it was used as titles is for Darth Vader as Dark Lord of the Sith. But it was only until, and there were some mentions in prior things prior to The Phantom Menace, but I think this was the first, yeah, it says the first film to identify characters as Sith on screen. Um, and there is additional footage that shows this, but it says that in the novel series, the Thrawn trilogy, author Timothy Zahn labeled Darth Vader and Emperor Palpatine as Dark Jedi, as the meaning of the term Sith had not yet been defined. And so I think that was continued yeah. on. Yeah. Which I think is quite accurate as well, that for what characters and the universe at large would perceive is um, these people are just Jedi, but they're dark. It is kind of cool seeing dark Jedi being used instead. Yeah. I, I like the vibe it gives. For yeah. Star Wars. Yeah. I liked it. Yeah. It, I don't know. It almost took away a little bit of the mystery knowing that, oh, they're Sith. I don't know. It's just, I liked not realizing that. It's nice to return uh, to simpler times when we didn't yeah, know what the Clone yeah. Wars were. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But I think then, like, we've come to an era where Sith is slapped on things a little bit too quickly. Yeah, yeah. it is. Definitely. Especially font makers. <laughs> Scott. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. There are, in our lightsaber <laughs> hobby, there are quite a few artists who make noises for the lightsabers we make and mm. they like to use sith for their artist name a lot yeah yeah uh the last point that i'd like to bring up is um that leia seems to have some sort of uh knowledge about who sabayoth the original sabayoth possibly was because she notes that sabayoth had a power and history so but wedge didn't seem to know so that makes me think that it was he was quite a political figure possibly mm -hmm. but not necessarily um one of public knowledge mm. Mm. yeah i just i still think it's a little unusual that her and wedge knew about it luke didn't but they're also still i know we talked about this i think at one point but they're still using his clone name jeruis unless that's just for the sake of the reader but well they lay referred to him as Joris. Did she? Mm. Yeah, she did. did I, she? I noticed okay. that. It, yeah, she said Joris. Oh. oh. Yeah. So it might come down to just like an accent kind of thing of like mm. people just perceiving other people talking as, you know, the fallibility of, of communication by language. But okay. Yeah. But also, I mean, they don't know that it's a clone and we only see. Right. And referred to by his clone name by those who know, like Thrawn mm -hmm. and Pelion. Yeah. So right. um, they're referring to the original in their discussions. Yeah. And so I do think there probably is a pronunciation difference. Um, we just, mm -hmm. you know, our main heroes just haven't had the opportunity to use it in that context yet. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Does anyone have any more thoughts? I'm interested to see how the fake Leia voice plan works out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See how well 3PO can <laughs> imitate her. Yeah. It was kind of, kind of nice having all the threads come together here. Yeah. Um, and now they're diverging again. Uh, I hope that 
instead of having five different plot, plot threads <laughs> that card will be added to yes <laughs> this please in a meaningful way <laughs> please um yeah yeah <laughs> i don't want Maybe another more nothing than... burger scene <laughs> <laughs> this has been the lost holocon you can find transcripts links to discussion and more at our website lostholocon.com while you're there you can learn how you can support the creation of future episodes read on and we'll be waiting for you in the next transmission we would be honored if you would join us <laughs>